Good morning, Arsene. Um, Champions League draw happened late last night. Um, Napoli, Marseille, Dortmund. Uh, seems a tough one on paper for us. It's difficult, but exciting as well because uh, it's a very uh, gr uh, group of a very good level, and uh, we've played Dortmund two years ago, and uh, we did well against them. And uh, uh, Naples has done well last year. Marseille, we played as well two years ago. It's a similar group to what we knew two years ago, you know, but. Uh, Every game uh, will be of a huge importance because it could be down to a point or goal difference in the end. A couple of hours before that, you announced that you'd signed Flamini or re-signed Flamini to Arsenal. Um, you, you must have spoken to him. Is the um, ambition still there to achieve? With yes, the ambition is there and he's uh, hugely fit. You know, we came here for fitness and we tested him quite well. He worked very hard and. Uh, I think uh, he knows how we want to play. He knows uh, uh, that uh, the ambition we have and he's quite versatile. He can play in different positions. And for me, uh, when I saw in what kind of uh, mental state and physical shape he was, it uh, was a no-brainer. And moving into the weekend game, um, team news. Podolski unfortunately is out for a long period of time, but Jack and Aaron are OK. Just tell us about what happened with Lucas, please. Yes, a uh, grade three uh, hamstring. That means uh, it's eight to ten weeks. Can be more to be fully match fit. You can count uh, three months. And in terms of the team news, nothing's changed from yesterday. No, nothing changed from yesterday. Uh, uh, wheelchair looks all right. Ramsey looks all right. And uh, so we should. Everybody else should be available. And just lastly from me, North London Derby at the weekend, always massive games for all sorts of reasons. Just put this one into context. Well, uh, you know, with what, what is uh, important for us uh, is uh, to get on a winning run. Uh, we have now played in the last three games, we won the last three, so it's important that uh, we continue that. And uh, it's a good opportunity for us to show our strengths against Tottenham because there are as well uh, strengths and well their team and uh, I am confident that we'll uh, have a very good performance. Good morning Arson. After all these years is this still the one that gets the juices going? Is this still the tie that you look out for at the start of the season? Yeah, it's, it's always a big game because it's a special rivalry between uh, the two teams. But as well for me, it's uh, three points that are vitally important because we want to play at the top of the league. And after uh, our start, it's important, of course, that we win the game. Are you aware of your North London derby record? No. And you've played 41-18, so it's quite impressive. Well, uh, we had always good teams, you know, and when you have good teams, you have a good chance to win games. What have you made of what Spurs have done this summer? It seems they're buying players left, right and centre, which is the opposite approach of Arsenal, it seems. Well, I don't think I'm in the best position to judge that. Uh, I know all the players they bought, and uh, for the rest we'll see uh, how they integrate and how well they will do, but uh, it's very difficult to predict that. Do you think they've had to buy players to close the gap to Arsenal, and have they closed the gap to Arsenal? I don't know. <coughs> Uh, they try very hard, of course, that's normal, but uh, in our job, you know, when you, uh, there's a technical risk <laughs> when you buy more than three players always because uh, uh, you unbalance a little bit the stability of your squad and uh, I know that uh, in England it's uh, very well seen, but uh, uh, it's always different when you bring so many players in, how everybody will do to predict that. Do you think the seven players they've brought in, contracted by the fact that they're going to lose Gareth Bale, is their squad stronger or weaker, do you think? I don't know more than you. <laughs> in your opinion, is it stronger or weaker? I would like uh, to keep my opinion for myself. Okay. 
on that case, especially. And just as a sort of final question, I, sort of, I think I know what the answer is going to be, but are you still active in the transfer market? Are you still looking to get deals? Are you any closer to getting any deals done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when might we expect that? Before the weekend or last thing on Monday? Or? I don't know. <clears throat> How confident are you, Arsene, that you, you, like you said last week, you have to bring players in because of the numbers you have here. How confident are you that you, you will bring some players in? I'm confident. Do you have to be careful not to panic buy as you, as you get nearer and nearer the window? We will not uh, panic buy, that is for sure. You can believe me. It's not my strength to panic. You, talk, you just spoke there about the technical risk if you bring in more than three players. What, what do you mean by that? <coughs> you said there's a technical, to Tottenham, there's a technical risk if you bring in too many players or more than three players. What do you mean by that? As you have to find to integrate more, you know, and uh, your squad is always a balance and uh, there's a bit more uh, risk. It can work as well, it can click uh, fantastically well, but there's a little risk on the stability of a squad and on your technical uh, consistency. So I think Tottenham may be bringing maybe three more in before the window shuts. Is there a danger they, they've gone the other way? Well, uh, honestly as well, I must uh, confess that I'm not too much worried about the, uh, their risk, you know, and what they, they do. I believe uh, uh, you win games when you focus on yourself and the quality of our game. Uh, it's not a special uh, uh, statement for Tottenham. It's, for us, it's exactly the same. It's always uh, difficult to integrate many players together. Do you think they've stolen the march a bit this summer with the, with the business they've done? And obviously, so far, you haven't. They've got a bit of an advantage on you. Look, uh, the, the only thing that counts in football, I can understand that it's very uh, interesting for people to read the newspapers and to see who comes in and who goes out, but there's only one thing that uh, if you love really football is what's happening on the pitch and uh, when you see our team play, I uh, think that is the most important, is that what's happening on the pitch. We have uh, a way to play, we have a uh, uh, good players, and let's focus on that. Awesome. What do you, what do you remember about um, last last season's game at the Emirates? Because before Adebayor got himself sent off, they were Spurs would go up, and they seemed to be in control of the game. Well, the game lasts ninety minutes, and uh, uh, the behaviour of the players <laughs> has to be focused and uh, and uh, normal for ninety minutes. So what what? It's very difficult to predict what would have happened had Adebayo stayed on, you know, but that's part of the game as well. We played against Aston Villa uh, with 10 men who uh, didn't deserve to be sent off. Nobody cared about it. Nobody asked what, what would have happened if Kosciani had stayed on. Certainly would not have lost the game, So, but uh, that's uh, part of the decisions of the referee. And how big a blow is Podolski being Because he's had a good start to the season, hasn't he? Yes, he had a good start of the season, but uh, we have players who have quality and it's a shame that people see it only when they are injured. So obviously that's a chance for other players, like we'll cut one or two others, to kind of step up to the plate and show that perhaps you don't need a possibly another striker. You, you need good players in every position and especially you need uh, an attitude and a way to play the game. The players we have here know how we want to play and uh, that is important. If we can add players who can integrate that style of play, we will do it. And uh, we work very hard on that. If we cannot, we will not do anything stupid just to, uh, to uh, for the sake of having said uh, we have done something. We do what makes sense or not. That's simple. And finally, just could you just explain the process with Flamini signing? Because you said he just initially came just to train with you. So yeah. was there a point where, uh, was there some point in that process where you thought he is looking good at training and we'll perhaps give him a contract? How did it work? Yes, at the start I didn't want to sign him. I am completely honest about that, you know. I didn't envisage at all to do it. Uh, the circumstances and uh, his attitude convinced me to do it. 
and uh, that's why uh, at the end of the day, because I didn't expect him to be in that uh, sh mental state and in that uh, physical shape. And in our job, our job has a great quality, is a good teacher of humility. And uh, so you have always be ready to change your mind. And he changed my mind. Awesome. Is it fair to say you have offers on the table for more than one player? Look, uh, I can uh, lend you my phone. Yes, please do. <laughs> and, uh, and you will see that I have 50 players offered per day. No, at you, least. But you making offers for players, do you have more than one offer for players? Uh, that I would like to keep confidential. Okay, I'll look but if I give you my phone, you will see. <laughs> Very kind of you. And are you completely 100% satisfied with your recruitment process here at Arsenal and the, the scouting network that you have in place? Or do you feel that needs amending at some stage? I'm completely happy uh, with what we do and how we do things. Uh, I know that uh, it's under scrutiny always and uh, analysis, but... Uh, I don't share the critics that is made of that, you know. So it won't change? No. Arsene, um, hasn't quite gone through yet, but what do you make of Real Madrid paying £86 million for Gareth Bale? They're very generous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, in price at least, that puts him right up there with Ronaldo and Messi as basically the best player in the world. I mean, is he that good? Look, uh, I don't think at all that the prices are linked with the quality of the players in uh, during this summer, especially. And uh, that the prices today are just linked with the financial power and the desire of a buyer. But uh, it's impossible to assess a, a market where you can say that this is the normal price for this player because that's his quality. It, that has gone completely because you go from transfer from 0 to 10 and after from 30 to 80, but it's not linked uh, with the quality of the players at all. It's just linked with the financial power of the buyer. So do you think they've overpaid the buyer? Look, uh, for me, there's very, 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 very few players who uh, are economically justifying uh, or make sense to pay over fifty million pounds. Is he one of them? <laughs> <laughs> I just if you analyze well just what I said, you can uh, find your own conclusion. Fair enough. <laughs> just, just one finally for me. You you've had to deal with losing obviously big players in the last few years. Tottenham having to go through that now, that that is a difficult thing to deal with, isn't it? Losing very difficult, like yes, that. of course. Can have a negative impact. It has a negative impact when you lose your best players, always. Because you're perceived as well that uh, uh, by your fans, like a uh, lack of ambition, that uh, by the rest of the squad, that uh, they lose uh, strength in their team. They've gone through that process uh, consistently, and uh, it demands, of course, always a mental adjustment. Uh, again, to, to uh, keep your ambition alive, and it's very, very difficult. Now, Arsene, just check this. Is Koscielny the only player coming back into the squad? <coughs> yes. He was in the squad on... Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, for, for, the, for the Premier League. On Tuesday, yes, for the Premier yeah. League, yes. Um, we can talk about players coming in, etc. Is, is there any more information you can give us about your own future and about the, the contract no. talks? Is that something which you are now putting completely on the <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, my, my future at the moment is uh, not the most important. I will, uh, uh, I think at the moment what is important is that, as you know, we, we have a big game on Sunday. That is a priority. After that, uh, until Tuesday, is a transfer market open. And that is a, another priority. And... Uh, uh, I'm not on the transfer market, so that's <laughs> not a priority. Just, um, just a bit more general question about um, uh, Wojciech. Maybe against uh, a 
Aston Villa, he showed you know a, a little bit of, of, of a different side of his character with you know a bit of a head rush coming out, and yet also against Fulham, he pulled off that good double save. Where, where do you sort of see him now in his development? Do you think he's, he's over the problems that he had last season and, and looking <coughs> at the future and settled to your number I one? I think he's season? over the problems he had. Yes, he had a deep in form last year, and uh, he came back at the end of the season. He's a good form, good one. And uh, overall, he is uh, uh, back to, for me to his best. We forget that uh, he's a boy who has uh, uh, only his third season in the Premier League. He's 23 years old. That uh, for a goalkeeper, that is very young. He uh, was one year third, last year fourth in the Premier League. For such a young goalkeeper, it's not a bad achievement, you know. And. Uh, I'm sure that you would see a great team from uh, Chesney. And I rate very highly Fabianski, uh, you know. And uh, that's why I think I have two very good goalkeepers. Is that a position you ever looked at during the transfer window? Did you think about some experience? No, when Manone went, we were open to have a third goalkeeper. Why? Because we, uh, if something happens, you know, you're quickly short. and. Uh, uh, we have Amy Martinez as number three, but he has no experience at all in the Premier League. And uh, that's why we had always an eye open, and it's not, this position is not completely closed yet. Hey, hello, Arsen. Um, do you agree with uh, Roberto Martinez and Michael Ladru, two foreign coaches, and they have asked to shut the market window before the, the, the tournament starts? Yes, completely. Why? Because you can play three times against the same player in the league, and uh, uh, that is not right, and it could be a disadvantage. Uh, there's many things still to change in the Premier League, but uh, they say as well, uh, they have never done it before. Why? Because all the championships do not start at the same uh, period, and if only England closes it, you can still have the same instability, because uh, Spain starts in September, so they will keep the transfer window open. So if you start and you shut your transfer window when you start the championship, still the players can go out to Spain or to Italy if they don't do it at the same time. And uh, the second reason for that is that uh, some teams uh, play qualifiers for the Champions League. So they do not know before end of August if they supplementary financial resources to buy players or not. So they wait until the end of the qualifiers of the Champions League to give these teams an opportunity to buy players because they have more income than they would have had if they had gone out. You know, all these kind of reasons make uh, coordination of the uh, transfer market a bit uh, more difficult. I'm taking this thing in mind. Are you going to talk to them or to the other coaches to would a formal request to the FA to change this kind of rules or...? or? Well, in, in England, uh, uh, as much as the managers have quite a good power inside the club, as little is their power on the decision level in the uh, Premier League. They have nothing to say at all. And uh, I can see how that can change. <laughs> also, are you expecting Nicholas Spentner to leave Arsenal in this transfer window? And if not, would you consider using playtime for the first team? Look, uh, the chances for him to leave now are very, very small. And uh, if he doesn't uh, leave and prepares well and is fit, really fit, I will use him. Is he training with the first team at the moment? Not at the moment because he comes back from a small surgery mm. and is not ready to integrate the, the training sessions. C'est les deux, c'est un plaisir et c'est en même temps un danger parce que c'est toujours difficile pour nous. Je connais très bien le foot français et euh, en France c'est toujours très difficile euh, de gagner. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de cette équipe de Libo qu'elle a changé depuis deux ans et il faut je pense qu'il a fait un travail remarquable puisqu'il est arrivé après une saison difficile pour Marseille et puis qu'il a très bien redressé la barre l'an dernier.
Oh, so as, a, as a fellow Premier League manager, do you have any sympathy with, with Andre villas Because he's had a summer of people asking him non-stop about his best player leaving the club, who still hasn't left. And he still gets asked every day, is he going, is he going? As a fellow manager, do you have any sympathy with what he's had to go through? Of course. I have sympathy for every single manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because I know then that I'm not the only one to suffer. <laughs> After what happened with Robin last year, though, you know what, you know what he's going through, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. I've gone through that every season. And usually the questions for me started in January. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.